wiring system that I have in my, or actually I'm putting in to my uh, Alacrity 19 foot sailboat. It is very simple wiring because it is a trailer sailor. You know, I don't have a charging system on a, on a motor. Um, I don't have a motor connection on this at all. Uh, so just to show how to, how to do a simple wiring of a small sailboat. Um, first thing I did is I decided that I wanted to have two lockers. I wanted to have my battery locker that would be in the center line of the boat so that the weight of the batteries would en enhance the build and would be balanced. Um, and there's a good spot right underneath the companionway. So I'm calling that my battery locker where I'm going to put two batteries. Right now I only have one. That's why this is a dotted line because that's my future battery. Then I'm going to have an electrical locker which is actually the uh, back surface of a cabinet that uh, I'm uh, calling my nav center, which really isn't a nav center. It's just a little cabinet with a little, little tabletop and a uh, flush mount uh, or a piece of wood for uh, mounting things on. Anyway, so I'm calling that my electrical uh, lock locker. And then, of course, I have my loads out, spread out around the, the, the boat, my uh, nav lights, my interior lights, my bilge pump, and others. Uh, so how did I go about doing this? The first thing is I decided that I wanted to have a kind of a switch panel, electrical panel. Um, this actually came with the boat. Uh, this isn't exactly the one that I have, but it's the idea. It's got, mine has circuit breakers. These has fuses for each individual circuit and a switch that can be wired up to, to light when it's turned on or not to light. Um, and I'll wire it up so that when I push these on, the lights turn on. Um, so what uh, what do you do? First, uh, battery locker is about six feet away from the uh, electrical locker. So between the two, I want to have really good wires. So I'm using the uh, thick battery wires that you get. So in order to do that, I need to buy some, oops, didn't mean to do that. I need to buy some power posts. And these are power posts that cost about $10 each. Um, I think I got them at uh, Gander Mountain. Uh, I'll try to look up where I got everything and put them in the notes. Um, but these have the large terminal studs that will accept a uh, power cable from a battery. So that's these two here. So let's follow the system through. So we got a battery, and we have a positive, we have a negative, and we'll put the positive and put that through an AB switch. That's one of these. I can select. Uh, battery A, battery B, both or off. So this is my main way to turn off all the power to the boat when I leave. So that's the switch right here. Coming out of the battery locker, I want to protect the battery at basically as close to the battery as I can. So I'm putting a breaker right here, a circuit breaker. That is this right here. It's a Atwood uh, 50 amp circuit breaker. And it's held a reset button on the side. So no matter what happens outside the battery locker, if something shorts, um, if, if these two, somebody puts a piece of wire between these two because they don't know what they're doing, and they short the system out and get a lot of current driving through, you don't want this piece of wire to heat up to the point where it catches the boat on fire, so the breaker will shut it down. And 50 amps should be uh, plenty for what I need to do, good protection. So the main power... And notice this is a very thick line, which indicating that I'm using uh, a thick battery cable. I want to have the thicker the cable, the less power loss through the cable uh, voltage. Um, anyway, so I go to a power post, which is one of these. From there, I'm going to go to my electrical panel, which is right here. To protect this electrical panel, I'm putting a 30 amp uh, fuse in line. It's just a little car fuse. It, that you can buy in line fuse. I think I paid five bucks for it. Um, and it's got the little micro uh, fuses in here. A little 30 amp because nothing coming off of here is going to draw more than 30 amps um, altogether. Um, then inside this electrical panel, all the positives are wired together. So I only have to bring one line in. But each switch has an individual neutral. So coming out of here, you know, I've, I've, I've drawn this red because, it's, to me, 
positive goes all the way to the device, and then negative comes from the device. So coming off of here, you've got individual switches, so I need to have a terminal block. You can buy both a terminal block and a bus bar. A bus bar is one line where everything's connected together. A terminal block has individual, so this would be circuit one, this would be circuit two, this would be circuit three, where I'm going to wire up to my electrical panel, my switch panel, and then from there out to my load. So you wire up each thing individually, out to each load individually. Then coming off of the load, you have your negative, and you want to bring it to the negative of your battery, and all the negatives can be tied together. So I've got a bus bar instead of a terminal block. So the bus bar is here, and this bus bar um, is located right next to the power post, so I have a nice thick wire that goes between, I think this is four inches at the most, not nah, less than that, probably two, three inches of wire. Uh, so I go from that stud to that stud, and then back to the battery. Now notice the battery, the AB switch only has three connections on it. It has one for battery A, one for battery B, and the output. It doesn't have any place for the neutral, so the neutrals are tied together. And that works very well. Now you might say, you know, there's a couple of things missing. Uh, the first thing that's missing is I've got a VHS radio. Where should I put that? A lot of different discussions on the internet as to where's the best place to put it. If I put it up here as one of the loads, so, it has to, so this switch has to be on. So this switch has to be on. This switch has to be on. And then I can turn my radio on. The problem with that is if anything happens to the switch panel, if anything breaks, if this inline fuse goes, um, not so worried about this breaker because that's a pretty big breaker, but if this inline fuse goes or something shorts out on this system, which is very possible, which will call this fuse to go, I lose the ability to use my radio. And this is an emergency piece of advice, of equipment. So some people will wire this directly to the battery. Now, the disadvantage of that is when I leave, I've got to be very careful to make sure I turn this off or I'm going to drain my battery. So my compromise, which I think is a good one, is I'm going to actually wire it up to these two power posts. So I'm going to put it up here, wire it directly to these two power posts. I can still use my AB switch and put it in the off position. I'll kill power to the whole boat. So when I leave, just turn this off. I know I've got everything turned off. So if I, I don't have to check the radio itself to make sure it's been turned off. It also has its own inline fuse. So when I connect this up, I'll have my own inline fuse to the radio, so I'll be protected there. Uh, the only thing that would stop me from being able to use the radio is if I'm stupid enough to leave this in the off position or if this main breaker goes. Um, uh, then if the main breaker goes, I would just turn off all my loads and reset it, and then I can get back to my to using my, my radio. The other thing is I don't have a way to charge things. I don't have a way to charge the battery. I don't have any solar system. I don't have any electric motor. I don't have any motor that has a charging system on it. The motor I have on my boat is a, um, a trolling motor. I only did that because my wife yelled at me and she told me I needed to have a motor on my boat. Um, I tend to use oars. Um, um, actually, to be honest, I sail in and out of, of the ramp all the time. That's only a 19-foot boat. It's very nimble, very good boat for sailing. So um, I don't really use my, my electric motor very much. But if I was going to use my electric motor, what would I do? I would probably to these two main power posts, I would get uh, another thick cable and go out to the stern of my boat to where I connect up to my, my uh, trolling motor. But it, So I'm going to be using these power posts for wiring up to my radio, wiring up to my motor if I want to. If I had a uh, bilge pump that had an automatic on-off float switch, I'd probably wire it up to the power post as well. And since I don't have that, I'm wiring up my bilge pump to my switch panel because I need a way to turn it on and off. Um, the last thing is uh, charging. Uh, I bring the boat home, and I've just 
put this in the off position, and I put my charger on my battery, and I charge it in my driveway. Uh, no big deal. Um, but if I wanted to put a solar system in, I would probably also connect it to the power posts. And I put the little regulator, solar regulator, in my electrical locker, and so it's all here. So in a nutshell, that is uh, how I'm wiring up my system um, on my boat. And I think it's very straightforward and very simple. As a little side note, I'm also going to print this out and laminate it and put it in the electrical locker so that if anybody needs to know how things are wired up, I've got it there, the reference right there, getting it laminated at, uh, you know, um, at a Fed Express office, what they call Kinko's, sorry, Kinko's office. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Thank you for listening.